How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. Now we recently had a look at how to correctly set up your brake levers, but in today's video we're going to be looking at how to get more power out of your brakes. Now why would you want to do that? Well simply to be able to stop quicker and more effectively, thus allowing you to ride safer as well as faster because the later you can brake the longer you're going fast for. Now four piston brakes that are quite powerful are, are commonplace now on trail and enduro bikes, but not all of them are made equal. In this video, we're gonna have a look at a few things that you can adjust here and there to get a bit more oomph out of your brakes if that's what you're looking for. Let's take a look. Increasing the size of your brake rotors will give the brake caliper better leverage over the wheel for stopping power, as well as allowing your brakes to cool more effectively. Now we're seeing rotor sizes of up to 220 mils on some downhill enduro and e-mountain bikes, but it isn't necessary for you to go that big. There's a good chance your bike at the rear and the fork won't even be able to support rotors that size. A 200mm brake rotor up front is a no-brainer if you're doing any kind of serious trail riding. This is because about 70% of your braking capacity comes from the front wheel. Now because of the added benefits of cooling from the larger rotor, it also might be a good idea to upspec the size at the rear of the bike due to the prolonged usage that your rear brake usually sees. Be sure to check that your frame and fork are both compatible with the larger rotor size before you upsize, but if you're in the green, enjoy the increased leverage and cooling effects. As we mentioned in our previous Tech Tuesday, your brake lever setup can have quite an effect on the effectiveness of your braking. The best practice is to brake with one finger on the end of the lever with enough room between the lever and the grip for you to get an effective pull in there. The last portion of your index finger is the most sensitive and should give you the best feel on the lever in terms of how much power and how hard you're pulling the lever. In terms of maintenance on your brakes, if your hydraulic brakes are feeling a little bit squishy and not giving you the power that you're used to, it might be that they're in need of a bleed. Over time, air makes its way into the hydraulic hoses and then when you pull the lever, it compresses that air instead of effectively translating the power into the calipers. Bleeding the brakes removes this air from the system. This can be done at home if you have the right tools and the know-how, but if not, your local bike shop should definitely be able to sort you out. At the brake pads, there are a few things that you can look out for. Giving your brake pads and rotors a good clean with some brake cleaner and a fresh rag is always going to be a good move to start. When it comes to aligning the pads properly on either side of the rotor, this can be quite tricky, but the benefit of the even power distribution will be better braking. All you're going to need to do this is a hex tool or a Torx key to fit the bolts on your brake calipers. You want to loosen these enough just so you can move the caliper slightly and then adjust it until you get an even sliver of light on either side of the rotor between the pads and the rotor. With the brake pads, you might find that yours are quite well worn. You don't want to run them until they're all but gone, but rather replacing them at least before they hit three quarters worn. When it comes to choosing brake pads, you typically have either organic or metallic pads. You want to try and be consistent with which brake pads you use on your rotor, not switching between the two. The advantages of the organic brake pads is that they have a much more powerful bite point, though they don't last as long and they're not as good in the wet. Whereas the converse is true for the metallic pads, might not be as powerful, but they'd work better in the wet and they do last longer. You gotta weigh up which is gonna be the better choice for you and then stick to that. Naturally, not all brands of brake pads are created equal. You'll have to work out with your local bike shop or online retailer, which are the best recommended or most powerful. Whenever you do get yourself a fresh set of brake pads or new rotors, it's really crucial that you bed them in properly. This is the process of transferring a film from the brake pads onto the rotor to fill in any imperfections. A good way to go about doing this is to find yourself a quiet gradual hill that you can roll down a few times. Start from the top and roll down the hill gradually applying consistent pressure to the brakes without coming to a stop or doing any skids until you've completed the reps. Once you've done this about 10 times you should notice a dramatic increase in the power that you get out of the brakes and this will mean that they have bedded in properly and they're ready to be taken out into the wild. If you are looking to get more power out of your brakes, hopefully you found a few helpful tips in here. Let us know in the comments if there's anything else that you found helpful in getting more power out of your brakes, and we will see you next time. Cheers.